Well, hello and good morning. Uh, it is such an absolute pleasure and an honor, a privilege to be here with, with you all. And, oh, I can really just get the feeling right away what an uh, amazing and heartfelt community this is. And a uh, special acknowledgement to the band. I'm really, really enjoying just all these awesome and beautiful vibes coming from you all. So uh, I'm going to attempt to share my screen here. I do have a uh, PowerPoint to go along with my talk. Um, is that coming through? Can someone give me like a thumbs up indication that? Yes. Okay. All right. Awesome. I'm seeing some thumbs. So yes. Uh, thank you so much for that that introduction, and 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 thank you as well, again for just the opportunity to participate. Uh, so yet my my talk today is titled uh, "Cosmic Consciousness and the Great Awakening of Humanity." I'm going to be connecting some dots between the idea that. Uh, within each one of us, there is something cosmic, uh, something infinite, something divine. Uh, connecting that idea to this idea that there's something big, something tremendous, something potentially intergalactic that's happening and unfolding on planet Earth right now, right? Times of great change and transformation. And uh, that's probably not any news to most of you out there. Uh, I'm sure everyone in our, in our own unique ways can uh, feel this, you know, uh, to be true. But uh, hopefully I'll connect the dots in, in some ways that are interesting and, and uh, stimulating and thought provoking. So uh, I want to start with a quote. And this quote actually comes from Carl Jung, who says, your vision will become clear only when you look into your heart. Who looks outside dreams, who looks inside awakens. So I want to invite just a moment of, of looking inside, right? Becoming aware of our awareness. If you bring your attention to the space between your ears, behind your eyes, what do you find there in that space? It's like there is this spaciousness, right? This window, this opening, this clearing. And our experience of, our entire experience of the infinite universe out there happens in here within what we are. It's truly miraculous. It's incredible, right? Uh, there's something profoundly mysterious about it as well. Like within each passing moment, there is an incredible mystery that's unfolding. And it's really, well, just fascinating to acknowledge that even though every single one of us is conscious, no one actually knows what consciousness is, right? This is arguably one of the greatest mysteries that's facing modern science today. To use some sort of modern scientific jargon, this is known as the hard problem of consciousness. And it goes as follows. If consciousness is, emerges from the physical brain, how is it possible that a collection of mindless particles, the atoms and protons, neutrons, which make up our brain, how can a collection of mindless particles come together to create a mindful experience? In other words, why wouldn't all of this brain activity just happen in the dark with no one here to perceive it? It's like something to be you, to be me. And no one in modern science can explain this, right? Of course, if we look to the ancient wisdom of our ancestors, the mystics, sages, spiritual teachers for thousands of years, They've given us answers, right? They've given us insights, but it requires us opening our minds as, uh, you know, I'm sure everyone who's participating in this, in this uh, group here is already well open to this, but just the idea that uh, maybe consciousness isn't just produced by the brain. Maybe it's fundamental. Maybe there's something infinite, something divine within each one of us, right? This is just an image that I, I really like where we can see um, sort of like an individual localized manifestation of life, of consciousness, as a, a sort of image moves to the right. We can see how this localized manifestation of consciousness is actually part of something much greater, right? Within each one of us, there's something that is, is cosmic. I mean, truly, if we pause to just zoom out to a bigger picture image of where we are and what's happening here, right? Uh, it's clear that we are cosmic beings. The very atoms that make up our bodies, our, our physical being, were forged in the heart of stars billions of years ago, 
<laughs> I mean, this is incredible to really let that sink in. We are born out of the cosmos into the cosmos, out of uh, cosmic forces that are beyond imagination, beyond fathoming. Uh, you may have heard this Alan Watts quote before, we are the universe experiencing itself through itself, right? Hmm. And uh, just looking, again, sort of bringing together science and spirituality here, uh, looking to the history of the universe, the origin of uh, you and I, and uh, all of the stars, all of the planets, all of the galaxies, every single being, uh, throughout this universe, according to our best knowledge, all, all began as a singularity. If you look to the uh, where the arrow is indicating to the left of the image, uh, all of this infinite cosmos began as one, uh, supposedly, apparently, as a, as a point of energy that was a billion times smaller than a single atom. Whatever you are, whatever I am, uh, we were there together as one. This is like the theme song, right? I was really enjoying listening to that. Uh, it's it's so cl clear, however we slice it, whether from a scientific perspective or from the ancient teachings of the mystics, all is one, right? So if all is one, if we are one with the infinite, this is like a waves on the surface of the ocean. You may have heard this quote from Rumi, you are not a drop in the ocean, but the whole ocean in a drop. Right. Uh, again, if we're looking at waves on the surface of the ocean, maybe there's a wave there and the, there's a wave over there. And in truth, they are two separate and distinct waves. Right. But if we look on a deeper level beneath the surface, there's only oneness. Right. Both waves are manifestations of the same infinite ocean and on a deeper level are not even interconnected. They're fundamentally one in the same. Uh, I would submit that the same is true for you and I. Right. Uh, our consciousness. If we look more deeply into who and what we are on that deeper level, we're part of the same infinite unified field, right? And if we are one with the infinite source, that means as well that there is something here. There's something to what you are, the one who is aware of this experience right now, that is infinite, that is cosmic as well, right? The, this ancient teaching has been codified like in, in all of the world's major religions from, from you know, uh, Jesus to Rumi to Muhammad to the Bhagavad Gita to Buddhism, the, the, the Lotus Sutra, that all is one. And uh, God or divinity is not out there somewhere, but within, at the very core of our being. It's the fundamental truth of who and what we are. All of the world's uh, major uh, religions, spiritual teachers, mystics, shamans, visionaries, universally, uniformly, in their own unique language, have expressed this fundamental truth, right? Just connecting these ideas of consciousness and the soul, science and spirituality, at the end of the day, it's all one, right? Uh, we seem to be disconnected from that in the modern era. But in truth, it's all one. This is timeless spiritual wisdom. And uh, the author Aldous Huxley once described it as the perennial philosophy that all over the world, uh, the same core teachings have manifested independently of sociocultural and religious uh, uh, disparities, right? That all is one, that we're infinite divine beings, that divinity is not out there, but in here. Just another way of phrasing this, uh, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. I want to invite you to just take a moment to really let that sink in, the reality, the truth of that. Could it be that this lifetime, this experience is just another chapter in a never-ending dance, a cosmic adventure, journey, uh, to really allow our minds and our hearts to open to this? This is the path of awakening. Right. This is the path of of liberation. This is um, in 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 Buddhism, right? Uh, central to escaping suffering, right? Discovering truth. But again, it seems that just looking around uh, the the world today, <laughs> to say the least, it seems we've forgotten these fundamental 
uh, teachings that on one on one level really just seem so obvious, so fundamentally true. Just zooming out to space, looking at Earth, it's all one, right? It's a tiny pale blue dot floating amongst a vast sea of stars, right? The oneness is so obvious, and yet looking around the world today, again, we seem more polarized, more divided than ever before. But what is going on here? Again, it seems we've forgotten not only our, our oneness, but our connection to spirit has been severed somehow, right? And uh, Eckhart Tolle shares this quote that, um, sorry, let me move this uh, piece here. The awakening of consciousness is the next evolutionary step for humankind, right? We are now in a race between consciousness and catastrophe. I mean, I'm an optimist to the end. I think that uh, this evolution of consciousness is happening because it's been prophesized about by our ancestors for thousands of years, as I'll share more in a moment. Uh, but this is the sad reality, right? Is that uh, I think the only way that humankind at this point can save ourselves uh, over the long term from self-destruction is through an evolution of consciousness. As Albert Einstein said, no problem can be solved from the same state of consciousness which created it, right? At this point, uh, clever politics, socioeconomic initiatives, policies will never be enough. We need something deeper. We need something truer. We need a new myth. We need an inner evolution, an inner evolution in the minds and hearts of humankind where we remember our oneness, where we repair our connection to spirit. It's almost like we're in a collective dark night of the soul, right? Here's a quote from Joseph Campbell. The dark night of the soul comes just before revelation. When everything is lost and all seems darkness, then comes the new life and all that is needed. Uh, this is a, a message of hope that as dark as things do appear in the world today, and maybe they will continue to get darker for a little while, right? Uh, there's something unfolding here. This is an archetypal process. It's almost like an alchemical process where the darker things get, the more potential is created for a new light to emerge, right? And probably, I mean, this is probably why most of us are here in the first place in this participating in this group, because we've experienced to some degree, the dark night of the soul, right? We know how consciousness evolution, how awakening emerges out of suffering. Suffering is a spiritual teacher in disguise in many cases. Here's an image for you all. Uh, it's the transformation of caterpillar to butterfly. And I just want to, you know, submit this as like a metaphor for the human collective right now. It's interesting to notice how uh, this miracle of metamorphosis, of transformation, can only take place if the caterpillar breaks down. In some senses, the caterpillar must die. The cater caterpillar enters into the chrysalis and dissolves into like a liquid molecular soup, right? There's an element of chaos in the process of uncertainty, of not knowing how things are going to unfold. Things break down, but they must in order to create the po potential, the possibility of radical, miraculous, uh, miraculous transformation, right? Now, could it be that humanity as a collective right now is uh, somewhere in the chrysalis phase? <laughs> uh, things seem to be breaking down. Right. <clears throat> but again, I would I would I would claim that this is part of a necessary part, a necessary part of a uh, ancient and um, timeless process encoded in nature uh, in many, many different ways as above. So below, as they say. Right. Now, what's really, really interesting is that for thousands of years all around the world, our ancestors have prophesied about this very time, right? Here in this image, you see uh, the Mayan calendar and, you know, in popular culture, it was popularized that uh, 2012, according to the Mayan culture, would, would be a time of, of, of uh, great, great destruction, right? I think actually a more nuanced, deeper understanding of uh, the Mayan calendar was that it was an end of a era, time period, but uh, one that also... Uh, included the birth, the dawn of a new one, right? But again, uh, it is fascinating, mysterious, incredible 
the fact that we see these prophecies popping up all over the world from thousands of years ago, somehow uh, the ancients foretold of this human humanity's sort of descent into darkness, into chaos, as well as the dawn of a new era. So this is a prophecy of Toth. I just want to share with you from ancient Egypt. It's um, shared in a uh, text called the Hermetica and uh, goes as follows. There will come a time when it will have been in vain that Egyptians have honored the Godhead with heartfelt piety and service. Sorry, just moving. Got some tabs open here. They will no longer love this world around us, this incomparable work of God. Darkness will be preferred to light and death will be thought more profitable than life. The madman will be thought a brave man and the wicked will be esteemed as good. As to the soul and the belief that it is immortal, all this they will mock and even persuade themselves that it is false. But when all this has befallen, and the, then God, the creator of all things, will look on that which has come to pass and will stop the disorder by the counterforce of his will, which is the good. Such is the birth of the cosmos. It is a making again of all things good, a holy and awe-striking restoration of all nature. It's remarkable, right, how seemingly accurately this prophecy from thousands of years ago seems to sort of characterize uh, um, modern times, right? Uh, but again, what's even more incredible is how many of these prophecies there are. If we travel thousands of miles away uh, to North America, the Hopi tribe uh, uh, shared what's called the prophecy of the rainbow warriors, right? Just a few few phrases from the prophecy of the rainbow warriors. When the earth is ravaged and the animals are dying, a new tribe of people shall come into the earth from many colors, classes, and creeds, and who by their actions and deeds shall make the earth green again. They will reteach the values and the knowledge that has been lost in time. And the great trees that perish will return almost overnight. Uh, it's interesting, right, to just acknowledge some of the parallels between these two prophecies that occurred <laughs> thousands of miles away, distant in, in space and time, right? Saying the same, saying the same things, but it continues because there's there's more and more of these prophecies, right? This is just a, a short list. Uh, in South America, the Incan uh, civilization shared what was called the prophecy of the eagle and the condor. All the way over in uh, Australia, we have what's known as the Uluru prophecy from the Aboriginal people there. In the New Age movement, we have the age, this idea of the age of, of Aquarius, right? Uh, even in, in Hinduism, uh, there's this teaching of different locus or time, time periods, right? Epics uh, of, of time as one ends, another begins. And so clearly, clearly this idea of a, of a great awakening, a great shift, uh, the coming of a new dawn, the birth of a new collective consciousness, uh, has been swirling in the human collective for thousands of years. I mean, how is that even possible, right? How is it even possible that all these ancient people somehow foretold of the exact same thing, the exact same uh, um, unfolding of events? It's fascinating. It's very mysterious. But uh, in some senses, it points to the idea that there is this... Uh, collective consciousness, right? This oneness, this interconnectedness between all of us. And the more that we open to that, the deeper that we can begin to glean insights and information, and new awareness uh, on, that, on that deeper level. And just reiterates the idea that we are all part of an unfolding here that uh, in some senses, I think that uh, this, is, this is the destiny of, of humankind, right? So again, this is a message of hope that as challenging and dark as, as things can seem, as divided as humanity may appear to be at the moment, uh, over the long term, maybe there's something deeper. Maybe there's a deeper wisdom that's unfolding here through all of us as us. And I'm not saying that, uh, you know, even within our lifetimes necessarily, everything's going to be, uh, you know, rainbows and butterflies. Um, <laughs> challenging times ahead very challenging times ahead. Things may continue to get darker before uh, things dawn. But as you know, that Joseph Campbell quote shared, 
uh, in a sense, uh, the night is darkest just before the dawn here, right? Um, and just being open to that possibility, being open to the possibilities of goodness coming out of chaos allows us to keep our own vibe high, right? How to be of service in these times. I want to end by just sharing with you this quote from Ramana Maharshi. Your own self-realization is the greatest service that you can render the world. Just really letting that sink in. Uh, that ultimately the change is not out there somewhere. It is right here within each one of us. The more that we can tap into higher states of consciousness, the more that we bring into our body, into our life, uh, goodness, love, positivity, compassion, peace, kindness, the more we're bringing that into this world, into the collective, it ripples outwardly in a way that's deeper than we can perceive with our physical senses. Because again, we're all one here. <laughs> uh, what, we, what you and I are bringing into our lifetimes, this is a gift. This is an offering to the whole collective. So just want to end by kind of inviting again, uh, just a brief moment of going inwardly. Just noticing what's here. And if it feels available, just inviting in a feeling of gratitude. It's like inwardly saying thank you, feeling gratitude for the gift of another day, for this, this group, uh, for this amazing community here. Uh, these this energy is amplified in 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 groups i think maybe just a moment of of compassion for a world that's clearly in need of of healing compassion is beautiful as an idea but what does it feel like in the body maybe a moment of love for others for ourselves for the planet Again, love, uh, not just as an idea, but as a felt sense, feeling, love, opening of the heart. This is how we uh, play our own little part in helping facilitating uh, human evolution on a micro and a macro cosmic level. So uh, thank you all so very much. Uh, just throwing up my my contact information here uh, for anyone who would like to to reach out get in touch uh, please do so it's an absolute pleasure to be here and share with you all and I just want to say thank you so much uh, again for for this opportunity <laughs>